If the worst of the worst hits our nation and the grid is wiped out, only the prepared will survive. Will you be among those survivors? Hey guys, it's Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I'm gonna go over essential preps that you need when the grid goes down, especially now going into summer and then going into hurricane season. This is something that we all need to plan for. There are places where the power grid is outdated and weak, and at the same time, the population is rising in some of these areas. More and more people are moving into these places, the temperatures are getting more and more extreme, and all of these factors and more are increasing the demand for electricity and overtaxing a system that's not built or maintained to support it. At some point, the system will collapse, or at the very least, they're gonna start shutting it down to protect the grid. This already happens all the time. Even if it's not something that you see happening in your area, Every single one of us, no matter where we live, has the possibility of the grid going down, whether for a few hours, a few days, or much, much longer. So it's important to prepare as best we can to be ready for that possibility. Talk to anyone who's gone through the aftermath of a hurricane or an ice storm, tornadoes, anything along those lines. They can leave folks without power for weeks, and anyone who's been through it will tell you the difference that a little preparedness will make. And if grid failures are caused by something more serious and more widespread, such as an EMP strike or any kind of attack on our homeland, whether a physical assault or a cyber attack, only the prepared will survive. When I think about grid down preps, there's two categories. You can really group everything into one of these two categories. There are items that we use to generate or store power, and then we use that power to power things when the grid goes down. And then there are items that work without electricity to replace the items and tools that we rely on that typically rely on power or electricity. That second category is actually really important. It's important to know and plan how you would do things to get by without any source of power whatsoever. Anytime I talk about grid down, I do like to start with a reminder to make sure you have these basic safety items. First and foremost, a carbon monoxide detector. Also a smoke detector and a fire extinguisher. Remember in a grid down scenario, you will probably be using alternative fuels, alternative appliances, and basic systems in your home may fail or malfunction. You also may have no way to contact emergency services or they may be unable to respond if you do. So you may be on your own and you need to take your safety into your own hands. Presumably and hopefully you already have all these items in your home. However, I do like to keep extras with my emergency supplies supplies at least a carbon monoxide detector at the very least with a battery backup and a fire extinguisher. If you can afford it, a great thing to add would be some type of air quality monitor that can also monitor for low oxygen levels and gas leaks. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, for that first category, generating and storing power, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is having a generator or generators. This is kind of the ultimate big ticket prep that everyone wants to have. If a generator is not in your budget or not in the cards for you for whatever reason, hold tight because after this I do have lots and lots of other options and other items to help you out in a grid down situation. A generator is not a necessity. While they are great to have, I still believe that everyone should be prepared to get by without them just the same, whether they have a generator or not. But if it's something that you can find a way to fit into your budget and your physical storage space, it's a great extra level of security to have a generator or generators. There's two main categories of generators and we have them both so I can go over the pros and cons of each. Obviously we think there's value in having both and that's why we have both. The first type is a fuel power generator. Of course, these run on gasoline, propane or natural gas or a combination of those. If you can, it's preferable to get a dual fuel generator that can run on either propane or gasoline, or there are even tri-fuel generators that can also burn natural gas. This is our generator. Ours is a dual fuel gas and propane generator. This is preferable mainly because you have options. Obviously a fuel power generator won't do you any good unless you have fuel stored up to use in it. And when your fuel runs out, depending on the situation and what's going on in your area, sometimes one type of fuel may be easier to find and procure than the other. So it's good to have both options. It's nice to have the propane option for several reasons. Now I'm not a mechanic, so I don't know the best way to say this, but basically propane won't gunk up your machine like the gasoline does. Propane is also easier and safer to store than gasoline. The second type of generator is what is referred to as a solar generator, which obviously uses the power of the sun to generate electricity. We have a couple of these generators. This is one of them right here. There are two main parts to a solar generator like this. This unit right here can stand alone as a portable 
portable power station. This stores the power. It doesn't generate power on its own. There are multiple ways to charge this unit. It can use a wall charger or a vehicle charger. Fully charge the battery and this unit alone can get you through for a while until the power is depleted. But add a solar panel or a pair of solar panels and this becomes a solar generator. You can then use the power of the sun to recharge this unit thousands and thousands of times. Now as far as the pros and cons of each one, the biggest benefits with a gas or dual fuel generator is that you can get one that can basically power your whole house. Ours is set up such that we can um, hook it into our home power system and it does basically power our whole home. We may have to be mindful of running certain things at the same time, but it does pretty well. You can even set yourself up with a standby generator that's already hooked into your home's power system and it will kick on automatically in the event of a power outage. Of course, keep in mind, if the grid goes down due to something like an EMP or a CME, you likely won't have a power system left in your house to hook a generator up to unless you've protected your home with an EMP shield, which we do have. They also have units to protect your generator as well, so keep that in mind. The negative aspects of fuel power generators, well, first of all, the fact that they use fuel. You can only store so much fuel and for so long, and after that, the usefulness of the generator depends on your ability to procure more fuel. Because they burn fuel, they produce carbon monoxide, and they also carry a risk of fire, explosion, and the like. They're bulky and heavy to move and store. Because of the carbon monoxide output, they cannot be used or stored inside your home. Because of this, they're more difficult to protect from theft or vandalism. So although these solar units that we have aren't as powerful as our gas generator, and I mean, you can get a solar setup that can power your whole house. It's just a lot more complicated, more expensive, and less portable. But these little units, that's where they shine. These are easy to carry, easy to operate. Even for me, I can do it myself. We can store and use them inside our home and move them wherever they're needed inside our home. So for apartment dwellers, for example, this is a much more feasible option. These units are also very safe, especially compared to gas generators. The Opus power stations that we have use lithium iron phosphate batteries. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are very stable and very safe. They don't overheat, they're not combustible, so they won't catch fire and burn, which is so important. They're also non-toxic and contain no rare earth metals, so they're also more environmentally friendly. We've also found that we run into a lot more opportunities to use these little generators where we wouldn't use a gas generator. We take these camping. Mr. Wicked Prepared will use them, you know, just when he needs to work in an area of the house that doesn't have power, like the attic, for example. I feel much better knowing that they're getting used rather than just sitting there. And like I mentioned before, these batteries are so long lasting that I'm not worried about wearing them out. If you are in the market for a solar generator, this is a great time to add one of these to your preps. Because in honor of Prime Days, Opus is having their own Prime Days sale. The sale is going on now through July 21st. And I went over and checked out the sale and they have some incredible deals. I saw discounts up to 35% off. These are definitely going to be the best prices of the year on these. They're matching the discounts across both Amazon and their own website so that you can shop whichever way you prefer. I know some people like shopping on Amazon because it's easy and familiar, and some people will do just about anything not to give Bezos any more of their money. Personally, I like to shop off the company's website when I can because you don't have to worry about unscrupulous third-party sellers. You know you're buying directly from the company, and right now during the Prime Days sale, Opus is giving away some pretty awesome free items if you purchase a certain amount, and I think you can only get those through their website, not Amazon. So check them out. Like I said, we have been very happy with our Opus units. This particular unit that I showed you today is their 1800 watt unit, but they have all sizes, so you can pick what fits your needs and your budget. They have smaller than this, they have bigger than this. Guys, I just saw this, they have come out with a 4,000 watt unit and it's expandable. That's nuts. That's where you're starting to get into what I was talking about, being able to power your whole home. You know, one thing that I did forget to mention when I was talking about the pros and cons of these is the noise. The solar generators are silent. They make no noise running. Whereas if you've ever used a gas generator, you know they are not silent. So if stealth may be important to you, then solar is the name of the game. I do realize that not everyone has the budget or the space for a generator, no matter the size. There are other things that can provide smaller amounts of power. The good thing about these is that they have more everyday uses as well. You know I love these backup batteries for my phone, but they could provide a charge to any USB powered device. There are even larger units just like this one that can provide multiple charges to these items. And you know I'm a big fan of Halo devices for my vehicle. These hold quite a bit of power and depending on the model they offer different ways to charge different things. There's even one that's meant for charging your laptop as well as boosting your car. 
Don't forget, and if you're a regular viewer, then you already know this, but for anyone new, we do try to provide links for everything we show in our videos for anyone who wants to go check them out for themselves. So go check out the description box below the video and we do have links down there to make it easy for you. And anytime we're able to get a discount code for our viewers, we put that down there as well. So go check that out. And if there's anything you're looking for that I missed, just ask down in the comments and I'll do my best to get you a link or at least tell you where I bought it. While we're on the subject of generating and storing power, we can't forget to mention batteries. It goes without saying, every prepared home should have a generous supply of these. Batteries are generally shelf stable for at least 10 years, and most of us use batteries regularly here and there for everyday items. So you should be able to build a fairly large stockpile of batteries that you can rotate through just like you should with food and any other preps. Some of the best and least expensive sources to buy batteries I have found are warehouse clubs like Sam's and BJ's. Um, both Walmart and Amazon have house brand batteries for really good prices. And when you buy these in bulk, I found that they usually come in these really nice, sturdy, squared off cardboard boxes that stack really nicely on your shelves. So we keep an assortment of batteries handy in the main part of the house um, in this battery storage box right here. It has two sides. And I don't even usually keep this all the way filled up because this can hold a ton of batteries and batteries are heavy. So I do let it dwindle. And then when it gets too low, I refill from our supply down cellar. But I love the way this keeps them organized and not jumbled all together. And it has a battery tester, it has screwdrivers, and it's also handy to just grab and take it camping with us or anywhere else like that. Now that we've talked about some of the options for storing and generating power, let's talk about some items and some tools that you can have to survive a grid down situation. Things that can take the place of your electric dependent items. Let me tell you a little story about me. I spent a large chunk of my childhood living on a property with no electricity and no running water or indoor plumbing. We were off grid when off grid wasn't cool. We used an outhouse for our bathroom. We did have a tub that we could fill with water that we heated on the stove. We had a gas stove for cooking and a wood stove for heating the house. For light, we did have one propane lamp that was um, had a permanent propane line to it and it was mounted on a beam in the kitchen. Other than that, we just used kerosene lamps. Some of the things that I remember most from my childhood are the smell of the kerosene when my dad was filling those lamps and waking up to the crinkling sound of him crumpling newspapers when he was starting the fire first thing in the morning. I stand in my kitchen today with all of my modern conveniences, my KitchenAid, even just my refrigerator, and I marvel at the fact that my mother made homemade cookies, homemade bread, and so many other things without any of these tools that make it so easy for me today. We never had anything store-bought. My mother made it all from scratch. But having that frame of reference from growing up that way, my mind is always thinking, how would I do this without electricity? And that's the way you need to think when you're formulating your emergency preparedness plan. There's a store called Lehman's. They're in, I think they're in Ohio, but they do have a website that you can shop from. I'll link to them down below. And they have a huge store and they're an Amish store. So they are totally dedicated to things and tools that you need for living without electricity. So they're a wonderful resource for this kind of stuff. First and foremost, if you have an electric stove, you're gonna need a way to cook your food, boil water, all of that. I always recommend this little emergency butane burner that we have. If you're a regular viewer, you have seen me use this to prepare all kinds of meals. This is a very inexpensive stove, this one right here. At the time that I bought it, mine was under $20. I did notice recently that it's gone up a little, which isn't surprising, but maybe like $25. I'll try to link this exact one that we have down below, but really there are many options available for butane burners. Butane is relatively easy to find it's safe to store and it can store for a long time and it's generally considered safe to use indoors I use mine indoors all the time there are a lot of options available for off-grid cooking especially if you open up outdoor options like your your barbecue grill charcoal fire pits solar ovens things like that but if it's the dead of winter up north or you have a hurricane raging outside you're not going to want to be cooking out there so it's important to have at least one indoor option and to make sure you have plenty of fuel stored as well while we're on the topic of cooking, think about what kinds of foods you want to have stored for these situations. Always make sure that you do have a supply of foods that are completely prepared, ready to eat, and could be eaten unheated if necessary. If you have an emergency burner like the one I just showed, hopefully that won't be necessary, but you just never know. So you need to be prepared for anything. So foods like canned soups, beef stew, SpaghettiOs, anything like that, or just add water meals that can be eaten cold, like my chia pudding meal in a jar. 
If you're not a fan of all the junk that's usually in those prepared canned meals, then check out Azure Standard if you've never shopped there before. They have more organic and clean food options, but they do have convenience meals like canned foods, like ramen and things like that. They just have cleaner versions. So I'll definitely have a link to them down in the description box as well. And go check them out if you like to eat a little bit healthier than all that canned processed stuff. For foods that do need cooking, go with things that cook quickly to conserve your fuel. Things like instant rice, instant beans, canned or freeze-dried meats and vegetables. Most of my meal in a jar recipes fit into this idea as well as most of my meal in a bag emergency meal kits. There are plenty of other kitchen tools that can replace your electric appliances. I know for cookies and breads, my mother just used a good old wooden spoon. These old fashioned rotary egg beaters are good for things like making whipped cream and things like that in place of your hand mixer or your stand mixer. My stepmother has one of these manual food processors and it works great. She uses hers all the time to blend the chunks out of her salsa, blend it smooth. And of course, don't forget a manual can opener. These are just a few examples of kitchen tools that can be useful for grid down cooking. But don't forget other types of tools for use outside the kitchen as well. It's important to have tools and even some building supplies as part of your preps, if at all possible. You may have to repair or at least temporarily patch damage to your home after a hurricane or other natural disaster. And if things get really bad and people get desperate and start looting and stealing, you may need to fortify your home. So having some supplies like plastic sheeting and plywood, as well as fasteners, duct tape, and basic hand tools can be important. Remember my off-grid childhood homestead? When we first moved to the property, there was a small two-room cabin that we lived in at first. After the first winter there, my dad built the big house that we moved into, as well as an outbuilding that housed a chicken coop, a woodshed, and a sauna. He built it all from the ground up without any power tools. I remember him using a carpenter's brace, a ratchet-driven screwdriver, and a handsaw every day as he worked. Now, even though we have a workshop full of power tools, I've made sure that we also have those off-grid versions as well. Another tool that's great for many tasks is a come along. I'm sure there's a more official name for these, but I don't know it. Mr. Wicked Prepared used one of these just the other day to single-handedly move our large chicken coop in an area that a truck or tractor couldn't reach. Again, these are just a few examples of tools that you can add to your preps. Leave me a comment down below with some more ideas. What off-grid tools do you think are essential to have? You will want to have something to provide light besides the typical um, flashlights, headlamps, and candles that pretty much everyone has or should have. It could be something as simple and inexpensive as an oil lamp like this. If you choose something like this, um, make sure that you have plenty of fuel stored for it. It could be battery operated lanterns like this. This particular unit has um, the option to take traditional batteries and to take a rechargeable battery pack, which we did have to buy separately, but it's nice to have that option. I tend to shy away from items that are only rechargeable. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with them now that we have a few of these solar generators, so I know I would be able to recharge my items. I still do like to have the option of traditional batteries as well, though, because I know I can store a lot of those and have a lot of um, power at my hands. I do like that this lantern has um, carabiner hangers on the top and the bottom in addition to the handle here, but we have several different types of lanterns like this. Another option would be a solar light system like this. We've had this for a few years and we've used it when we go camping and we really, really like it. It has three lamp style lights that can hang um, wherever you want them. They have pretty long cords. Um, we've only used them in the campsite. As long as we've had this, we've never lost knock on wood. We've never lost power long enough to need to use this at home, but we do use it camping every year. In fact, this past year, we didn't even bother to unpack our Coleman lanterns because we just solely use this. It also has a radio on this um, part right here and a light on this part. This is kind of the home base with the solar panel and the home base. That's all you need to get outside to charge it. And when we're camping, we just charge this during the day. We stick the solar panel up on the roof of our lean-to, charge it during the day, and we've never had it run out of power. We use the lights at night around our campsite and it works great. So this is another possibility that's not reliant upon any type of external batteries or external power. This creates its own power. So that's one thing that I really like about this system. You will want to have something for communication, some kind of a device that will work to let you know what's going on out there. This is an emergency radio we have that I really like. This does have the weather band radio as well. I really like this one because it has lots of different ways to power it. It will take regular old batteries and it can charge up. 
I like to have both of those options. I don't like to be um, stuck with just with things that recharge because if you don't have a way to recharge it and your emergency goes on longer, um, then your charge can last, then you're out of luck. So having the option to add batteries as well is awesome. And this one does both. Now speaking of generating power, this does, and many radios like this do, have these little solar panels and a hand crank. You can see the hand crank there on the side. I'm gonna say definitely don't count on those for charging. I mean, those are very, very slow and tedious ways to charge things like this. I guess it's a great option to have just in case you're really desperate and you have time on your hands, but I wouldn't count on that as your main um, way to charge this or as a way to really charge anything up. So definitely charge it with the wall plug and have plenty of batteries available for it. This little unit does have some neat features. It has this reading light um, that it has and then it has another light over here. So that's pretty handy to have in addition to all of the radio bands. Okay guys, that was today's look at some essential preps to have for any power outage or grid failure, big or small. Remember to always ask yourself about every situation, how would I do this without any power at all? And set yourself up. Keep on prepping guys. I hope you got some helpful ideas out of this video or at least some information you can use. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up every time you like, share, or comment on our videos and watch it all the way to the end. It really helps us out. So thank you. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me an electric plug emoji down in the comments and check out this video next for ways to stay cool during a summer power outage. I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.